if you've looked at the process manager or the load manager for your system, you might see something looks a bit like this. This is from my Mac. And you'll notice that HTOP lists four cores. Technically, it's two cores with four threads, but we're going to gloss over that detail for right now. And my little Intel NUC machine is running an Intel i3, and it has four, it can run four tasks at a time, basically. And my operating system, you know, schedules things in and out. And that's a desktop machine, and a fairly cheap desktop machine at that. It does a nice job, though. really like my NUC. But as you're moving into heavier duty hardware, you'll notice that clock speeds don't get faster anymore like they did back in the 90s. Instead, we go to more cores, and you get to this monster. This is the Intel Xeon Platinum 8180M processor. It costs a lot. I don't actually know how much. And it has 28 cores running 56 threads. So that's a lot. What you don't want, I've seen this happen on a couple of tasks, where you have something that's written sequentially, and you may have four or eight threads, is that one core is doing all the work and the others are doing basically nothing. Uh, that happens on old, some code. I've seen that with you know encoding videos with VLC or whatever. What you want is your workload to be distributed evenly or as close to evenly as possible across all the cores. I mean, imagine you went to the supermarket to buy your groceries and you know there were 10, teller, 10 checkout lines everybody's on line number four, and the other tellers are sitting there doing nothing. That's sort of the exact same analogous situation. And then, of course, in that situation, you would you know, not want to get on line number four. There are various ways to distribute processes across cores. In Erlang and Elixir, what we do is we use lots of processes, Erlang processes. So you have lots and lots of processes. Uh, you want the number of processes to be much greater than the number of cores. So if you have 56 cores, you want, you know, 10,000 or 100,000 processes. I don't know what the schedule is. And then you have something called work stealing. The, Erlang, the Beam scheduler will do this for you. You don't have to do anything spe special, which is a fancy way of saying that each core has its own queue, similar to your queue checking out at the supermarket, and that every so often they sync up and look and see, all right, how deep is your queue? And if you get to the point where, you know, scheduler number three has lots and lots of stuff in it and scheduler number four has nothing, the system will automatically take some of the things from Schedule three's queue and dump it into Schedule four's queue. It does this completely seamlessly. You don't notice it. It just works, which is great. So, you know, running something like Node.js on a single core machine, you can't do this. You only got one processor. Even if you have a cluster of multi-core machines or a cluster of Node.js implementations, you can't easily, as far as I understand it, transfer things core to core seamlessly in the way the Erlang runtime can do that. And again, the current top of the line Intel processor has 56 th threads. Uh, top line AMD is about the same, maybe it's 64, I forget. Um, but you can assume that over the next decade, those numbers will continue to rise because adding another core to a machine is much cheaper pr in terms of power usage and upping the clock speed. The clock, the power dissipation tends to go up at the third power of your clock speed. So you double your clock speed, you're suddenly using, dissipating eight times as much energy, and then you have to get rid of eight times as much heat. And there's all sorts of other problems too. So you don't want to do that. You want to sort of keep the clock speeds low and just add more cores. It's much generally more efficient in many cases. So Erlang can handle pretty much as many cores as you can throw at it. Um, and it does it. There's all sorts of complex mechanics that are happening in the runtime that I'm not going to go into because they're not all that important you can go look them up and read papers on them if you care to but the point is from a programmer point of view from our point of view as people developing on the airline system you don't have to worry about it you just say oh give me cores and it says okay here are a bunch you know here are a bunch of processes it distributes them normally one scheduler on each cpu cores the normal way and then processes just magically spread around. So anyway, that is how CP Erlang takes advantage of many cores and also how on uh, Elixir too, they, they run the same. And why it's such an advantage in this era of multi-core processors where we really do have a lot of cores 
and we have to program in a way that can handle concurrency because we're stuck with it. If you found this useful, please like and subscribe below, and you can feel free to reach out to me by leaving a comment here or by on LinkedIn or Twitter.